So last week, Amazon finally released the much-anticipated TV adaptation of Fallout. I watched the entire series over the weekend, and in this video, we're going to go over some of the biggest retcons and lore inconsistencies that are in the show. And just a heads up, there will be some spoilers. I have very mixed feelings about Fallout on Prime. Because on one hand, they absolutely nailed the aesthetics and vibe of Fallout. The show is very dark and gritty, much more brutal than I was expecting, and they captured the iconography of the series very well, even down to using sound effects from the games for things like the Pip-Boy, computer terminals, and power armor. It's certainly a lot better than the Halo show, which actively disrespected the source material. And I thought the writing was pretty good too. I was captivated by the individual storylines and most of the characters in this show. I'm particularly down bad for Lucy, who was played by Ella Purnell. She's a total baddie and did an excellent job in this role. But unfortunately, Amazon's Fallout also made some significant changes to the lore of the series, even to the point of completely retconning important events and locations. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Fallout lore, or are just sort of watching the show casually, then you probably won't care about these details. But for me, a longtime fan of the series who's played every game, I can't help but spot the retcons and inconsistencies, especially around the cause of the Great War and the fate of the NCR capital, Shady Sands. Without further ado, let's buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and dive into the lore problems in Amazon's Fallout. One of the biggest mysteries in the Fallout series is what caused the Great War of 2077. From the games, all we know is that China dropped nuclear bombs on the United States on October 23rd, 2077. You might find a terminal entry here or there with a clue as to what caused the war, but the specific series of events and triggers for the Great War were always intentionally vague in the games. Well, not anymore. The Fallout show just comes out and explicitly says that vault started the Great War in collaboration with a handful of powerful corporations. And they did this to remake the world in their desired image, retreating into vaults and letting everyone else die out so they could get a fresh start in the aftermath. To me, this completely spoils the mystique of the Great War, and it massively changes something that was deliberately left open to interpretation for over 25 years in this series. Now this isn't entirely out of left field, Bethesda did drop some hints in Fallout 4 that suggested vault Tech may have started or influenced the start of the Great War, but it was still unconfirmed. Not anymore though, and since Amazon Fallout is apparently canon according to Bethesda, we now must accept that vault Tech and a few other corporations orchestrated the Great War for financial and political gain. Now you could try and weasel your way out of this by saying that the war started anyway before vault initiated its plans, but it's very clear that they are saying in the Amazon show that vault started the war. It's not an implication, they're basically just saying it. How can you guarantee results? By dropping the bomb ourselves. The next elephant in the room is Shady Sands, which according to the show was wiped out by a nuclear bomb. We'll get into the specifics of that infamous chalkboard timeline in a moment, but the first big issue with Shady Sands is that the location of this city in the show is different from the one we see in the games. In Fallout 1, Shady Sands is located north of Necropolis, which is in the ruins of modern-day Bakersfield, California. And further to the south of Necropolis is the Boneyard, which is the ruins of Los Angeles. So this puts Shady Sands much further north of Los Angeles, somewhere in the Death Valley region, west of Las Vegas. However, in the show, Shady Sands has shifted much further south to the ruins of Los Angeles itself. In the last episode, we are viewing the ruins of Shady Sands from the Griffith Observatory, which is adjacent to Hollywood IRL. So unless there were multiple Shady Sands that both happened to be the capital of the NCR at one point or another, then the location of Shady Sands in Amazon's Fallout is a major retcon. Now I will admit that the Fallout 1 map doesn't correspond perfectly to the real world, since Bakersfield is actually northwest of LA, whereas Bakersfield in Fallout, aka Necropolis, is northeast of Los Angeles, aka the Boneyard. But that inconsistency doesn't change the fact that Amazon Fallout absolutely changed the location of Shady Sands. The second big issue has to do with the nuclear destruction of Shady Sands. 
In the show, Lucy and Maximus visit the ruins of Shady Sands, which is now a giant crater destroyed by a nuclear bomb. We later learn that the town was bombed by Lucy's father, Hank, who is a vault employee too, by the way. And he did this basically in a custody battle with his ex-wife, which is kind of crazy. And in episode 6, Lucy walks into a classroom in Vault 4, which has a timeline of Shady Sands written on a chalkboard. The last two things shown on this timeline are the quote-unquote fall of Shady Sands in 2277, followed by an arrow pointing to a nuclear mushroom cloud. Now, I initially read this to mean that the bomb dropped on Shady Sands in 2277, but a more charitable interpretation, and probably a more accurate one, is that the bombing happened later, and that the fall of Shady Sands is referring to some other event, or decline. Here is why this detail is so important. Fallout New Vegas takes place in 2281, and the NCR is a major faction in that game's story. Nobody in Fallout New Vegas ever mentions a nuclear bomb dropping on Shady Sands, which is the capital city of the NCR. So if the Fallout show is claiming that Shady Sands was turned into a nuclear crater in 2277, they are essentially rewriting the history of Fallout New Vegas. 2277 is also the first battle of Hoover Dam, where the NCR defeated Caesar's Legion and took control of the Mojave Wasteland. So are you telling me that they did this in the same year that their capital was turned into a giant nuclear crater? The only way any of this makes sense is if the bomb that destroyed Shady Sands fell sometime after the events of Fallout New Vegas, which again was 2281. This would seem to line up with the timeline of the show, as well as the ages of Lucy and Maximus. The show takes place in 2296, and we can sort of ballpark when the bomb fell on Shady Sands, based on a couple of things mentioned by Lucy and Maximus. So work with me here. In episode 5, Lucy tells Maximus that up until age 6, she's thought that the big lamp in their vault was the sun because her mother told her this. We can reason that Lucy's mom was involved in her life until roughly age six because of this comment. Shady Sands was destroyed by Lucy's father, Hank, around the time Lucy's mom left the vault. Now, we don't know Lucy's exact age in the show, but I would guess she's probably somewhere between 18 and early 20s. So if her mother was in her life until roughly age six, that means she left 12 to 14 years before the events of the show, which would place the bomb drop around 2282 to 2284. If Lucy is 18 in 2296, then the bomb dropped in 2284. If Lucy is 20 in 2296, then the bomb dropped in 2282. The only way the bomb could have dropped in 2277, based on Lucy's story about her mom, is if Lucy was born around six years prior to that in 2271 which would make her 25 years old in the show. Maximus was also a young boy when the bombs fell on Shady Sands. In the flashback scenes, we see that he looks to be around five or six years old when the Brotherhood of Steel rescued him from the ruins. Based on his immaturity and low rank in the Brotherhood of Steel, my guess is that Maximus is probably around 19 or 20 in 2296. So if Maximus was around 5 when the bomb fell on Shady Sands, and he is 20 in the show, that puts the bomb at 15 years before the present day show in 2296, so around 2281 for the bomb dropping on Shady Sands. Again, all of these are just estimates, so take it with a grain of salt, but I'm trying to be charitable and make this timeline make sense when comparing notes with Fallout New Vegas. Because if Shady Sands was destroyed before Fallout New Vegas in 2281, then it's completely ludicrous that no one would mention it at all. This event only makes sense if it happens after New Vegas. There are some other smaller details and inconsistencies as well. For instance, we see the ghoul Cooper consuming some kind of magical vial that prevents him from turning into a feral ghoul. This is never explained, and I don't think it's ever been seen in the Fallout games before. These things are just referred to as vials, and it looks like a piss yellow liquid. So I don't know, this is a weird detail. But the ghoul's lore has been getting more and more ridiculous as time has gone on with this series, especially after Bethesda took over. 
In the first game, they were just people with leathery skin who just got a bit too much radiation poisoning. But other than that, they were normal unless they went completely feral and lost their minds. But by Fallout 4 and the Amazon Prime show, they are immortal zombies who can survive for hundreds of years without food or water, but they also need to drink piss vials to keep from going feral, unless they are trapped in a fridge, in which case they are completely fine. I don't know, it's just completely ridiculous, dude. The Amazon show also changed the lore of the Gulpers, which were an enemy type first introduced in Fallout 4's Far Harbor DLC. Gulpers are mutated salamanders who have grown massively because of the radioactive fog that enveloped Far Harbor. Gulpers also appear in Fallout 76, which takes place in West Virginia. And yet, we also see Gulpers all the way across the country in California, but they are not just simple mutated creatures anymore, but failed experiments from vault -Tec. The main experiment of Vault 4, which Lucy uncovers in the show, was an attempt to create human-fish hybrids that had greater radiation resistance. The resulting experiments produced a number of abominations, and in the last frame of the video that the overseer shows Lucy, we see a gulper. So I guess gulpers are human-fish hybrids now, and not just mutated salamanders? Man, Alex Jones would have a field day. They have human-animal hybrids 30 years ago. What a bizarre change to the lore. The final retcon I noticed were the fiends. In episode 5, Lucy and Maximus get jumped by two junkies while crossing a bridge. And afterwards, Maximus says something to the effect of, Oh, those are fiends. They eat people. Now, the Fiends were a crazy gang in Fallout New Vegas that took over an old vault, Vault 3 to be specific, as well as some ruins on the outskirts of New Vegas. And they were basically a thorn in the side of the NCR. But they were called the Fiends because they were junkies, not cannibals. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there was any mention of the Fiends eating people in New Vegas. So why are they suddenly changing the meaning of the word in this show? At the end of the day, I still really enjoyed the Fallout show, but I just wish they would have nailed down more specific details on the lore. If you do have Amazon Prime, I do think it's worth checking out the show for yourself and seeing if you like it. But yeah, I don't know. I just have mixed feelings about it after watching it. Because on the one hand, they nailed the vibe of the show. But on the other hand, they really changed some things about the lore that I didn't particularly like. So let me know what you think about Amazon's Fallout show in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos and reviews. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.